Myths about water include guys walking on it, multiplying it and doing without it for seven weeks, but at least we can be assured that we need to be drinking at least eight glasses of it a day. Hello? Doctor Who? How'd you get this number? Oh, right. He says that's a myth too. Okay, let's take a water break. Water covers 71% of our world, 60% of our body is water, it's a simple compound, two hydrogens glued to an oxygen. Christians baptise with it, Muslims purify themselves with it before eating and praying, and to Buddhists it reminds them to cleanse their minds to attain the state of purity. From a 10 second Google search, the only guy running around trying to give nutritional advice from these groups is Timothy523, who says, Stop drinking only water and add a little wine because of your stomach and your frequent illnesses. Bit of a drinker. <laughs> Look, funny man, I want to know, do I need water and how much? Absolutely. Our brains and hearts are made up of 73% water and our lungs are made up of a whopping 89%. But it's spectral in how much we need and where we should get it. And I thought that'd be the end of the video. It was only when I started researching water that I realised it had a lot more to reveal. When I said everyone needs it, it seems that 99.9% .9 of the population needs it. But there are some people who don't need to take it from an external source. You slippery snake, what are you chatting about? I'm not going into it in this video, but Indian scientists weighed, watched, measured and monitored everything that this guy did for 15 days in a laboratory. He didn't eat or drink anything. When the time was up, they retested him and he had the same figures. And he was fine. If it's true, the implications for each and every one of us is greater than life on Mars. Water's first revelation. Nothing is definitive, nothing is absolute, and everything we think we know is open to being challenged. Now which is the bigger deal in terms of redefining the boundaries of human biology? The possibility of this guy not eating or drinking for 70 years, or Kim Kardashian's booty. Granted, it's close. If you judge it by media interest, it's dead ass. But that's the lowbrow media feeding the brain dead hungry masses. But what about those big brain scientists? I mean, this is the equivalent of a guy swallowing a bomb and just burping. The general scientific community's response to it could be summed up in three words. Impossible, impossible, and fraud. That's it. Water's second revelation. Our scientific community isn't as curious, cutting edge or groundbreaking as it's portrayed. So if Western science isn't furiously investigating outliers that could potentially change our understanding of what our species is capable of, what earth shattering business are they consumed with? It appears they're just re-examining established doctrines. Case in point, the eight, Eight ounce glasses a day. This seems to come from the 1945 Food and Nutrition Board recommendation, which we've been following as general advice for about seven decades. No one's died from it, and if you try it, you tend to feel better. But recently, scientists have looked again at the 8x8 and decided it's not based on solid research. Moreover, they're in a tiz because it suffered from the soundbite effect. The message has been misreported because the next line says, most of this quantity is contained in prepared food, but no one mentions that. Water's third revelation. Don't believe what you're told just because a group of scientists recommend it. Those guys can guess as much as Timothy. I keep saying, believe in your own experience, especially biologically, and try and identify the outliers so you can see where the ends of the spectrum are. So let's ask the common man what happens if he trains and gets dehydrated. Feel rubbish? Don't do as well? And how do you know? Because I know what my normal level is. I'm training under that. And this practice seems to be in line with other sports people's experiences. I mean, I've never heard it said. John Tucker, ESPN News. How do you explain your amazing performance today? Well, oh, I was a little parched, but uh, my thirst for victory, my thirst for water were the same. <laughs> But Stephen Chen, an elite cyclist and scientist, did his study and he found that dehydration had no effect on their performance. His advice, you can perform well even if you're a little bit dehydrated. Forget all the endurance runners and cyclists that have seen their performance go down for years. 
Forget all the sportsmen and women that are finely tuned and know when their performance is declining or improving. It's a liquid conspiracy and every jock's in on it. Listen, Mr. Leroy, <laughs> ignore your own experience. Lab results are science. Except when they come from India. Your results are bro science. This is like a scientist testing whether untied shoelaces affect performance, concluding they don't, and then advising, get this lace tying idea out of your head, because when we tested it, it didn't affect performance. But just because you can perform well with untied laces, doesn't mean it's to be done. How about tie your laces and stay hydrated, because scientific conclusions don't adjust for common sense. Water's fourth revelation. You don't get a sound bite or column inches for saying what everyone already knows. Fame lies in controversy. So what's the next scientific game changer they're investigating? Water's boring. Does that have to be water? Could I get busy with a fizzy? Could my fizzy be flavoured and grog soaked? Physician Heinz Valtin found there was also no research to suggest that other drinks couldn't be used to adequately hydrate us. He said, this conclusion is supported by published studies showing that caffeinated drinks, and to a lesser extent, mild alcoholic beverage, like beer in moderation, may indeed be counted towards the daily total. Rubbish! Even I know the brew and the booze dehydrates you. That can't count towards your daily water intake. No, Mr. Leroy. Science has debunked that myth too. Yes, wonderful. Take yesterday's experience, run it through a study today, and tomorrow it's a myth. You see, yesterday, if you drowned a couple of brewskis, or you were on a caffeine drip, the next morning, your mouth would feel like the Sahara. Since the experiment today, it's no longer the case. From tomorrow, your mouth's going to be as wet as whales. I can see places where science forwards our thinking. Normally in places where we don't understand how, why, or what, or we need to create. But this type of science takes phenomenon already established by experience, runs a lab test, finds a contradictory result, and then, rather than thinking, yeah, that's probably not right, thinks, well, I can't be wrong, must be right, call a press conference. It's like a maths proof that two plus two equals five. I'm sure mathematically it can be argued, but it's not making news, and banks aren't swapping four one pound coins for a fiver. Water's fifth revelation. You are your own best experiment. Water's big business is an industry there's a whole aisle dedicated to water, and that's not because supermarkets care about your health. It's profitable. But there's been a commercialization of water, not because it's essential, but because it sells. So much so, the CEO of Nestle, Peter Brabick, wants to own water. Scientists are now questioning whether fat cats are steering our media message on water. Fat cats bad, therefore, scientists good, right? But scientists have their own agenda as well. They're pointing to, and in breaking news, science warns that drinking too little water, even while sitting at a desk, could impair performance. Studies funded in part by the bottled water industry. Yeah. But how is this controversial? Or even news? You know, like new things? Unless you're surprised by, and this just in, breathing too little can impair performance. Well, what do you know? Back to you, John. And Valtin has issues with this. And in more breaking news, science says driving while dehydrated could be as bad as driving drunk. Studies funded in part by the bottled water industry. Yeah. Controversial? Really? Ever felt sleepy at the wheel? It's not ideal. When you're bending down for the night on the motorway in fifth gear, that's kind of as bad as being drunk. Don't sleep and drive. That's why they don't sell Hornicks at petrol stations. Now you've got to be sceptical about the commercialization of anything, but don't forget, scientists have their own competing agendas as well, and while the studies may have been funded by fat cats, it was another scientist that was on the payroll. Now this is news. Poisoned drinking water causes irreparable brain damage. Studies not funded by the bottled water industry. Hot nine. Water's sixth revelation. Just because someone's making a profit off it, doesn't mean it's not necessary. They'd sell you the air if they could. You'd still need to breathe. Scientists also claim to have broken down the myth that by the time that we feel thirsty, it's too late. You get thirsty when blood concentration has risen by 2%. You get dehydrated at 5%. Tacit ergo sum, drink when you're thirsty. Again though, look outside the petri dish. The same argument could be made for food. There's a mechanism that informs us when we need to eat and switches off when we're full. It's called hunger. But what's next? And in breaking news, scientists have recently rationalised that the obesity epidemic 
is a myth. The thirst mechanism in the modern world gets disrupted from the air con and central heating and the food and drinks we consume. The mechanism gets all discombobulated. Water's seventh revelation. Your environment affects your body. The debunking water myth is a good example of some scientists' current arrogance. They're shocked that the myth won't die in the light of their research, but maybe it's because people feel exponentially better from drinking clean, clear water. Science is there to explain the world that we see, not cloud the waters and confuse people. We've got religion for that. That's a thumbs down. Ultimately, there's no ideal amount of water for anyone, anywhere, at any time. There's just no magic number. And this is why the answer's spectral. Where you are in your development, where you're living, what your physiological makeup is, what you're doing as an activity, and when in the year it is, all affects where you lie on it. Look, give me a figure. I'm sick of you and Dr. Idiot's cryptic nonsense. How much? Okay. Well, the body through breathing alone loses one to two litres a day, so replacing that's a good start, and then just experiment on yourself. So how much is one to two litres? About six to eight glasses. Ooh. Snap. Have your say in the comments, bay. Hit the thumbs up, and if you like my vibe, please subscribe. Woo! Woo!